What's up guys, gals? It's your red-cheeked host with the most griever as always, bringing you guys the latest chapter review for Jujutsu Kaisen chapter 161. And this is going to be a short video. I don't even know if I can push this thing to 10 fucking minutes to be perfectly honest with you. And I'll tell you why. I, I, I don't care. I, I do not care what happened in like the first half, not even the first half, but like three quarters of this chapter. Like the beginning of the chapter, we were supposed to be, boom, we're already into the culling game, we're into the barrier, let's go. They spend most of that time, they spend like three to four pages of Fushigoro basically summarizing, making Itadori sort of the, the moron character. Like I really don't understand yet. Yes, you do. You're just reminding the audience sort of idea. That's what we're doing here with this chapter. It's sort of, let's remind the audience what exactly is going on, what we're after, what our goal is, just in case nobody read the last 10 chapters, right? So realistically, it was just like, here's the narrator, here's your recap, and let's go, right? Sort of like that Netflix thing, you know, here's the recap from the last, last episode in case you missed it, except they're doing it in real time in the chapter. So realistically, not much to talk about there. And then also we get introduced to these, I'm going to assume fodder sorcerers, these fodder characters that are based apparently on like planes. Because one girl turns her hair into a goddamn jet plane and flies around. One one dude who seems to, maybe it's a family of them. One guy, maybe it's a cousin or a baby brother or something, apparently knows Itadori. I, I don't know where from, I don't recognize this person. Is waving like a traffic stick. One of the like, you're good, you're good, you're good. Sort of like, like directing air traffic controller sort of idea. So we got one of those guys. So that's why I'm believing that this like, it, it could be... It could be a multitude of things. It could be a plane. It could be a missile. It could be a jet pack. But I'm assuming that it's meant to be more like a fighter jet style. The hair turns into it. It, it looks kind of like it's unique. I don't think I like it that much, to be perfectly honest with you guys. And then for the rest of it, it's just like there's this other dude, this big brawny guy who comes in after that. Like it's an initial thing. Itadori uh, and Megami, they go into the, they finally enter the culling game officially. They jump in. Apparently they're transported like RuneScape style or like any MMORPG. Boom, you are dropped down into one of nine random locations inside the colony. Here we go. So they're automatically separated. This Honestly, not a huge fan of that either because that sort of eliminates all the planning from last chapter. What the hell was the point, you know? So uh, I'm, I'm not a too... Like, this seems to be more of a plot device chapter. If you guys can't figure it out, I only like one part of this chapter. Honestly, very weak chapter. Not a bad chapter. I don't hate the chapter. But what's actually good about it? You know, realistically, there's one good thing and it's the end page. The end page is awesome. Other than that, does anybody really like what's going on here? Number one, we spent this time getting Hakari so we could get the bang, like the gang together so we could basically be like, all right, let's plan this out. We're not going to enter the culling game foolishly. We've already sent out our scouters. We've sent out Yuto. We've sent out this. Now we're going to basically present a united front. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. You could argue this is good writing or this is a good, good thing that this happens. I don't think so because they willingly said, okay, like we're going to delve into these groups. We're going to do pairs we're going to do pairs instead of a whole group going to one colony we're going to split up into pairs we're going to work together so that we can easily like manage this situation right and basically that's just all thrown out the window right off the bat because of the random location thing which realistically i would argue shouldn't that be in the rule set like they explain everything else once you enter the culling game once you enter with a barrier this, here are the rules of the game. I would argue that technically speaking, it's not breaking the plot or, or a plot hole necessarily, but it's a bit of a gray area that this is not what explained in the rules. I would argue that. Because every single tutorial of any video game I've ever played with a rule set, any MMO, anything like that, has always stated, okay, you will be uh, transported to one of three random locations in this section of the game. Or you'll be transported, like, if you play as a wizard, like, let's take Dragon Age, perfect, uh, great series. Um, depending on your origin story, you're going to start out in a different area that, like, if you pick a dwarf, you're going to be in the dwarf city. If you pick a mage, you're going to be in the tower. If you pick an elf, you're going to be in the forest. Like, 
but that is established from the moment you choose. It's already before you even pick your origin story, it's described you're going to start in this area. So I would argue honestly that 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 actually bothers me a little bit because that should have been explained. That's sort of like a ha ha gotcha bitch when it's like that shouldn't have happened. It should have been part of the rules. And the second part that's problematic about this whole, they both enter the culling game, they get transported, Yuji has to fight the aircraft crew, and then uh, Megumi has to, Megumi has to fight this, um, Fushiguro has to fight this uh, this weird, like, sort of girl, I guess. She's got, like, pigtails or whatever. Anyway, her name's Remy, apparently, and she's looking for a knight in shining armor, and Fushiguro's like, I got no time for you, sort of idea. Makes a deal with her that she has to help him find out, like, where everybody is, sort of idea. It's like, well, fine, I won't kill you, but, you know, you need my, I need your help, like, blah, blah, blah. So they strike a really easy, quick deal because she knows she has no options. Um, and that's pretty much the chapter. That's pretty much the chapter. We'll talk about the last page here in a minute. It's just that overall, like the second problem, so let's go into the second problem, then we'll talk about the last page, and that's going to be the review, to be perfectly honest with you, because I didn't really care for the chapter. Um, like we've had, ever since the Maki thing, we've had this setup to enter this from a position of strength, as best that they can make their situation out to be, and all these rules are explained, all these additional rules, all this sort of, okay, we need tactics, we need this, we need that, just for it to be all thrown out. I already explained that problem. The second problem is this is used to just extend an unnecessary plot, in my opinion. I don't know what you guys think, but in my opinion, the fact that they had them together, we're going to present a united front, and they purposely didn't explain this in the rules and then separated them the moment this arc finally got underway was just so it's like, well, now we have another side quest. We also have to find Itadori now, or we have to find Fushigoro now. They have to find out not only where the enemy is, but they also have to figure out where each other are and stuff. And it's like an unnecessary added plot element that I'm not too much of a fan of. I don't care if this arc goes for 200 goddamn chapters. That's fine. I don't care as long as it's written well. This feels like an unnecessary plot point. It's also going to happen to Panda, and I can already see, I can already see Hikari Panda get split up. Hikari going to win his fight, most likely. Haha, -ha, we've got your pet. We've got your friend Panda. Make another move and he dies, and Hikari's going to have to give up his fight because Panda is taking hostage because they got separated. You guys can see that happening. I can see it happening. And I'm just concerned that we're going to have some bullshittery that wouldn't have happened had they known this information. And I would argue, as I said in point one, this information should have been common knowledge as one of the rules of the game. I, I like You guys can argue, no, it shouldn't be. And I would say that I'm not 100% like, yes, absolutely should have been. I'm more of on the gray area. I'm on the fence about that. I still argue that it's a little convenient that this is not explained as part of the rules before someone enters the culling game. Everything else is explained. Every every other minute detail of how the culling game works, when it starts, how it ends, what are the ramifications, all that's explained. This whole, you're transported to different locations regardless from where you enter thing happens to just be missing from the rules. That seems ultra convenient to make the plot more like, I guess, complicated? I don't know. I just don't like it. I don't like the fact that they're separated from the beginning because I can see the problem with the hostage situation, the plot points, all these issues, right? And then the last part, the last part, let's talk about the one good thing out of the chapter, in my opinion, is Fushigoro. He, he as I said, he beats this girl, Remy, down, and she's like, oh, be my white knight. Yeah, sure, whatever. Just leave me where I want to go. And that's the deal they strike. It's not an official deal, not even a, it's a verbal deal, not even a handshake deal. So I, what weight does it hold? None. And, uh, and then we had the aircraft people, but whatever. Then he even says, he goes, I'm not like Itadori. I have no problem getting 100 points the way, the, 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 the number one way, the, the, the main way. So I'm just like, oh, oh dear. But also... Very, very cool. Very, very cool of Fushigoro to do this. And realistically, the smart way. Most of these people are revived. Like the sorcerers have been revived, revived from anywhere from one year ago to 1,000 years ago. These are all revived sorcerers who have no problem trying to kill you. As Fushigoro, I, I don't think he's thinking uh, necessarily like killing a bunch of civilians to rack up 100 points. But I'm thinking that he's saying, 
These people, they should already be dead. They're already technically dead. Me killing them technically is a murder. I don't think he's actually thinking along these lines, but even it, like what I'm considering is that you're killing a bunch of people who were already dead 500 years ago. Re-killing them isn't really murder. They should never have been here in the first place. This is Ken Jaku fuckery. So in Megumi's eyes, this would make total sense that he would just be like, if I kill enough sorcerers, I can just rack up the 100 points and get Sumiki out of here. And then my, my at least my objective is solved. And I've got no problem. When push comes to shove, I'll get the 100 points the other way. We're trying to do this as humane as possible, but I'm not giving up Sumiki for, for a technicality. I'll make myself a murderer today. You know, he, he's got no qualms about that. I respect him for it. He says he's not like Itadori in that way. Very, very good to point that out for the, for the audience and stuff. This was a great page. And as I said, I don't think he's even thinking the way that I'm explaining it. That it's like, well, most of the sorcerers, if he, because he's not going to go out and murder civilians. You know, Fushigoro is going to fight other sorcerers. The majority of them, we can assume, are brought back by Kenjaku due to contract and stuff. They're already dead. So killing them again, I mean, that's just, like, they shouldn't be alive anyway. So so that's sort of like a, a bit of a gray area, you could argue. But I think it's pretty black and white that, like, that's not really murder. They shouldn't even be alive in the first place. So if he wants to rack up 100 points doing that, I'm totally on board with him. But as I said before, even though I'm trying to justify that, I don't even think that's where his head's at. He's not even thinking it that way. He's just like, I don't care if they if they are 17 years old, born 17 years ago, and still alive today. I don't care. I'll get my 100 points one way or another, regardless who I have to kill, is, is his tunnel vision mindset. And I think that's really badass. I think that's really fucking cool. I think that Fushiguro actually saved this chapter from, in my opinion, being a bad chapter overall, just for plot points and realistically not doing anything. Uh... Other than like sort of backtracking from the end of the last chapter just for us to get into the finally into the culling game by the end of this chapter. It's like, okay, you know, a little bit of that. I think he saves this chapter from being just overall not a good chapter. Um, so yeah, definitely you are saving grace. Uh, honestly, out of the three, still my favorite of the main cast. I like him more than Yuji, and certainly you guys know how I feel about Nobara. Thank God she's dead. So anyways... Uh, that being the case, that's the end of the review. What did you guys think? This might be controversial. Some of you might have really liked this chapter. I didn't. But what did you guys think? And tell me how I'm wrong about the rules and blah, blah, blah. Let me know all that stuff because I have a comment section down below for it. But if you're going to tell me I'm wrong, at least have the courtesy to tell me why. If you disagree with any of my points, just don't say you're wrong, period. And some of you don't even use periods because I don't know. And then just that's it. Like, no, no, no. Explain your point to me. So I can go, okay, maybe I can get a new perspective on it. And maybe it's not as bad as I initially thought. I can't learn your guys' perspective if you don't explain it. So that being the case, though, don't forget to subscribe, comment, like. And the fourth most important thing, as always, is to drink responsibly, as always, as your host with the most griever always does. And we will see you guys back here. Not next week. Apparently we're on break, but you guys will definitely see me back here for chapter 162 when that chapter drops. Have a good one, everyone. See you next time.